Welcome everyone to this virtual CARTA symposium, Body Modification, Anatomy, Alteration, and Art in Anthropogeny. I am Katerina Semendeferi, one of the co-directors of CARTA. On behalf of all of us at CARTA, I'm happy to welcome you to today's proceedings. Among the oldest questions that we humans have asked ourselves are, who are we? What are we doing here? Where did we come from? How did we get here? And where are we going? Of these questions, where did we come from and how did we get here are of particular importance to anthropogeny. The key word in Carter's name is anthropogeny, the scientific quest to explain the origins of humans. Anthropogeny is at the intersection of the humanities and the natural sciences, and we believe that the only way to address these two important questions is to draw evidence from these very different disciplines. This symposium is brought to you by the Center for Academic Research and Training in Anthropogeny, CARTA. CARTA is a transdisciplinary collaboration between faculty at UC San Diego and the Salk Institute, along with interested scientists and other institutions whose mission is to explore and explain the origins of the human phenomenon. CARTA is co-directed by myself, Pascal Gagnon, and Gerald Joyce. We are assisted in this mission by Associate Directors Rachel Maybury and Alison Watry. Carta would like to thank the following supporters who keep our symposia free for all to enjoy. Carta's major sponsors are Annette C. Merrill Smith, Nisi and Ajit Varki, and an anonymous donor. We also thank Carta's benefactors and patrons. Additional support for this symposium was provided by the following individuals. Closed captioning for this symposium's recorded talks was made possible by CARTA patrons Ingrid Benierski Perkins and Gordon Perkins, increasing the access and the reach of CARTA's free public symposia. I encourage you to follow their example by supporting CARTA. Giving a gift is as simple as using your smartphone to scan this QR code or visiting the CARTA website. There is no amount too small to let CARTA know that our work is important to you and has made a difference in your thinking. Of course, an event like this is not possible without the dedication of those working behind the scenes. We are extremely fortunate to have a wonderful group of CARTA, San Diego Supercomputer Center, and UCSD TV staff who have produced this symposium and its related content. And lastly, thanks must go to you, our viewers. Through your interest and the dedicated efforts of CARTA and our contributing partners, CARTA Symposia have become the number one science program aired by UCTV amassing over 42 million views. You can explore the entire CARTA video library for free at the link shown here. On behalf of CARTA and SOLK, I hope that you will enjoy Body Modification, Anatomy, Alteration, and Art in Anthropogeny, co-chaired by Mark Collard and Francesco Derico. I am delighted to introduce Mark, who will give the opening remarks for today's event. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. Uh, hello, my name is Mark Collard, and I'm the Canada Research Chair in Human Evolutionary Studies and a Professor of Archaeology and Biological Anthropology at Simon Fraser University in British Columbia. It's my honour and pleasure to provide a few opening remarks for this Carter Symposium on Body Modification. First, I've been asked to encourage you to become a Carter supporter today. You can find out how to do so via this QR code or this URL. I would now like to offer some thanks on behalf of the other organiser, Francesco De Erico, and myself. To begin with, I'd like to thank the team of people who run Carter 
and make these wonderful symposia possible. I've been involved with Carter for nearly 20 years and have attended many symposia during that time. All of them have been excellent. I particularly enjoy the fact that Carter is such an interdisciplinary organisation. No matter what the topic of the symposium, one is guaranteed to hear an interesting take on the topic from a researcher in a discipline that one didn't know was relevant. It's really very refreshing and has influenced how I approach my own research. Next, I would like to thank my amazing PhD student, Bria McCauley. I got interested in the archaeology and anthropology of permanent body modification because of Bria, and she helped me write the proposal that led to the decision to run this symposium. This symposium would not have happened without her enthusiastic input. Lastly, I want to thank the speakers. Francesco and I are very grateful that they have taken the time and trouble to participate in the symposium, despite their busy schedules. I've organised a lot of academic events over the years, but I've rarely had such a smooth experience when it comes to lining up speakers. Everybody was very enthusiastic and very responsive, which made our task much easier. So thanks for that, folks. We owe you a beer the next time we see you in person. Earlier, I mentioned that Bria McCauley and I put together the proposal for the symposium. We were inspired to do so by two other initiatives in which we've been involved in the last couple of years. One is an Oxford University Press handbook focused on body modification. The handbook is being edited by Francesco and our friend and colleague, Dr. Franz Manny of the National Museum of Natural History in Paris. Bria and I have a written a review of finger amputation practices for the handbook and several other of today's speakers have chapters in the handbook too. The handbook isn't due to be published until the end of this year, but some chapters can already be downloaded from the OUP's website. If you Google the Oxford Handbook of the Archaeology and Anthropology of Body Modification, you should find the chapters without a problem. The other initiative that prompted Bria and I to propose this symposium was a session we organised at last year's annual meeting of the Society for American Archaeology. Even though we were given the worst time slot of the conference, 8am on the final morning, when most attendees are either leaving or nursing a hangover, the session went well. We were particularly pleased with the question and answer period, which was unusually lively and revealed that the session was attended by a number of non-specialists. This led Breer and I to conclude that body modification would probably be an excellent focus for a public science event. It was a short step from there to the idea of proposing a Carter Symposium on the topic. So that's the background to the symposium. Now I just want to briefly talk about its scope. Our main focus today is permanent body modification. This can be usually defined as any alteration of a body part that is irreversible, or at least not easily reversible, and carried out deliberately for non-medical reasons. This definition excludes alterations due to accidents, such as the loss of a finger whilst operating a circular saw. It also excludes the alteration of a body part to deal with a medical problem with that body part, such as amputating a mountain climber's frostbitten toe to stop the spread of gangrene. What the definition covers are alterations of body parts undertaken for purely cultural reasons, including signaling group membership, adhering to norms of beauty and mourning. Humans engage in both temporary and permanent body modification and they are clearly closely related phenomena. However, permanent body modification is more of a puzzle from an evolutionary perspective. This is partly because it is commonplace among living humans, but not seen in other extant mammals, and partly because it is often expensive and risky. Deliberately amputating a finger or removing an incisor is counterintuitive from the perspective of standard evolutionary theory. Such practices expose individuals to the risk of infection and almost certainly impede their ability to carry out key tasks, such as obtaining food and eating it. On the face of it then, many permanent body modification practices would seem to reduce the probability of producing and raising offspring rather than increasing it. So they are very intriguing for those of us who are interested in the evolution of human behaviour. Like most Carter Symposia, this one is strongly interdisciplinary. It brings together academics from several disciplines as well as a leading practitioner of permanent body modification. During the course of the symposium, we will cover a wide range of historical and contemporary body modification practices, including but not limited to tattooing, piercing, 
finger amputation and tooth ablation. In addition to considering the when and where of permanent body modification, we would delve into the motivations behind this behavior, considering both the personal justifications offered by participants and the scientific hypotheses proposed to explain it.